the inalienable right to nuclear energy as prescribed by the United Nations. But how are we to trust unstable leaders like Ahmadinejad and Khamenei who openly violate the most basic child rights conventions? Even though Iran has signed the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the Charter of the Rights of the Child, which blatantly forbids the executions of children, they continue to do so. This year alone, six children have been executed, and 140 remain in prison right now, awaiting their execution. My name is Nazanin. I'm an independent activist. I'm not part of any political group or organization, but I speak on behalf of all the oppressed. Thank you so much for inviting me to speak in your beautiful and dynamic city here. I was born in Iran in 1979 at the start of the revolution, which spiraled my country back into the Middle Ages, where people are stoned to death, hands are chopped off, and people bound and thrown from a height as a method of torture and punishment. My own father, as was mentioned, was imprisoned and tortured by the Revolutionary Guard and almost executed because he was allowing alcohol and music at the hotel where he managed. These were forbidden under the new Islamist rule. Nobel Peace Laureate Shirin Abadi had her judge license revoked because as a woman she was seen unfit for the job and women are valued half of a man under the Iranian penal code. How many of you here drink alcohol, dance, sing, listen to music? You would be imprisoned. How many of you have criticized your, your government on the street or in a blog? You would be tortured and imprisoned. Any converts from your religion to another? Specifically from Islam to another religion? You would be executed. I see a lot of women in the crowd. By now, the Iranian moral police would have rounded you up, beaten you, and thrown you in, thrown you in jail. Are you shocked? Do you find this repugnant? So do the Iranian people. Iranians love all people, including Americans and Jews alike. One of the most important messages that I can get across to you today is that President Ahmadinejad does not represent the people of Iran, nor does the Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei. The Iranian electoral system is set up in a way where candidates are pre-screened to be quote-unquote Islamic enough. If anyone disagrees in this police-like state against the regime, they are imprisoned, tortured, or executed. So when Ahmadinejad is legitimized by giving a speech at the UN as he is tomorrow, the vast majority of Iranians hide their head in shame. But this shame also belongs to the UN Assembly. A solution to the nuclear threat? The solution is not through military intervention. Military strikes would only play into the hands of the mullahs and fulfill Ahmadinejad's fanatic Shia prophecy of a chaotic time of great destruction whereby the 12th Imam, who's disappeared 1400 years ago, comes out of hiding and brings salvation to the world. Believe me when I tell you that Ahmadinejad welcomes armed intervention in conflict. He knows that that's the only way that Iranian people will be forced to side with the regime.